Oh mon dieu, what a gorgeous day to be right here by the Seine here in Paris, France with a nice beer and a crepe. But greetings and salutations guys, welcome back to another video. I'm not gonna lie, it's been a minute since we've done a life update and a Q&A and I figured I've got a couple of days left here in Paris, France. So it's a perfect time for me to update you guys as well as answer any questions you guys have been having about our time here in Europe. I've got my buddy Chandler behind the camera who's gonna be asking me a couple of questions that you guys have submitted. And to be honest, we're just gonna watch the sunset here on the Seine, sipping this beer and this crepe. So let's get into it. All right, hit me boss. What are the biggest differences between Europe and the US? I'm not gonna lie, throughout our time here, I've definitely quickly learned that there are a lot of not only cultural and social, but even economic and political adjustments that we had to make. Obviously, a lot of the cultural and social things have been pretty much the same. Paris is very much equivalent to any other metropolitan city in the States. To be honest, we've had no problems navigating our way through the metros. We've literally been in New York for the past two years. So everything pretty much feels the same as any big city. But on the flip side of that, there have been a lot of cultural adjustments we've had to make in terms of knowing that we are a us, knowing that we are Americans but to be honest all the people we've met so far have been super friendly and we've been getting along Whew, there's a bee on my crepe don't move oh god but I'm not gonna lie I do miss the simple pleasures of American fast food chick-fil-a we found our first Chipotle the other day which is a huge blessing oh my god this bee is just eating on my crepe all right boss next question What's one thing you miss about the US and what's one thing that Europe has that the US doesn't? I'm not gonna lie, having your own car and mode of transportation has been something I've been missing, especially since I was in Texas before coming here and being able to just blast your music in your car, go on a little road trip and have the freedom to just kind of go on the road whenever you please versus here you have to pretty much take the metro or Uber or take some sort of electric transportation. And because it is a city, it is very walkable and you can get to places just by a quick metro line or a couple of transfers. But to be honest, it's kind of the same feeling I had when I was in New York City. But another thing on transportation that Europe has that America doesn't is the high speed trains. And to be honest, we've already taken a couple of trains that have been able to get us all around Europe pretty quickly, affordably, and you get some really great views along the trip. And that kind of mode of public transportation would definitely be something that I would love to see more in America. Would you ever move to Europe? You know, we've been here about a month now and thoughts of moving to Europe have definitely crossed my mind. And it's not just a fleeting thought, but there are multiple recurring thoughts of thinking about what life would be like if I was a student here, if I settled down here, even got a girlfriend, you know, potentially moved here permanently. And there hasn't been many reasons that have proved me otherwise. I think for the majority of my time here, I've pretty much loved everything about it. The culture, the people, you're surrounded by beautiful architecture, beautiful history, beautiful art that you really you can find it in the states but in very geographically central located areas like Manhattan, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas whereas here the landscape and the terrain is so unique and so different no matter where you are if you're in France, Germany, Spain, England you're getting the best of everything in a very centrally located area where you can travel to so many different countries and the culture I think here there's been a lot more lax and freedom and obviously coming from a place like America where everyone is always hustling and come to kind of glorify that lifestyle. But here in Europe, people are much more lax with their time, even though they do work hard during the days. They take that time off to enjoy it with their friends and families over dinners and drinks and really live in the moment and just be. And I think that's something that we have been kind of missing from the States. Have you thought about going to grad school? I think the thoughts of grad school have definitely crossed my mind and have been once again, another prevalent thought, just because I realized that there may be more education that I want to pursue in terms of directing or filmmaking or even just the artistic field in general. In addition to my background at Princeton would really kind of help round out everything that I'm looking for in my education. And so yeah, grad or film school is definitely, definitely in the potential horizon for me. How long are you going to be in Paris for? So we've been in Paris for almost three weeks now, about to go on to our fourth. We knew when we got here that we kind of wanted to book it only for one month at a time before planning our next leg of the trip. And I'm not gonna lie, my sense of time has pretty much all blended together. I literally asked Chandler on the daily what day it is because like I said, I have pretty much no sense of time other than day, night, and evening. But as of recording this video, we have about three days left here in Paris. Have you struggled at all while living in Europe? <sighs> I'm not gonna lie. Coming out here on my own or with my best friend has proven to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. And obviously I'm 23, I figure, you know, I'm an adult. I can go out, travel, do these things by myself and really just live my own life and be as carefree as I want. But at the end of the day, it's really not the case. I have to be practical. I have to literally be an adult and have responsibilities. And part of that has been my mental health. And as you guys know, I've recently been through a breakup and part of the reason I came to Europe was to help cope with that and to really just take the time I needed for myself. And so, yeah, I've definitely been struggling. There have been nights where it's been hard to sleep, it's been hard to 
figure out what I want to do, not only with this channel, but the general direction of my life. And I'm not gonna lie, there have definitely been days where the anxiety has been overwhelming. Now, after a few months of trying to adjust to this next chapter of my life, I realized I was gonna need some more professional help. And that's why I'm recommending the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. Now, I'm not gonna lie, growing up, I never thought I was the type of person who needed a therapist. I thought that all the problems in my life, I could solve on my own. And the more I've come to realize is that it's okay to talk to someone and being able to share what you're feeling with a professional therapist has so many benefits. And I'm not gonna lie, the process was very simple. I filled out a couple of questions about the areas I wanted to improve and BetterHelp was able to match me with the therapist who I'm now able to call on a weekly session and can even participate in additional group therapy sessions. In the BetterHelp app, I even keep a journal, not only of the things I've been up to while I've been in Europe, but also anytime I've been feeling anxious or times where I feel nervous and unsure and I'm able to share that immediately with my therapist. We're at a time where therapy is becoming more and more normalized. So if you're ever feeling alone, anxious, or depressed, don't ever be afraid to reach out for help. It's one of the best things you can do to reach out for help and it's honestly been one of the best choices I've made in my life in a long time. So if you guys are looking to seek out professional help, head to the link in my description to learn more about BetterHelp. Where are you gonna go next? I think when I came to Europe, I definitely wanted to set my foot down here in Paris first, touch base knowing that this was a place that I was familiar and comfortable with, but at the same time knew that there were definitely going to be other legs of the journey that we wanted to embark on. Throughout our time here, we've already done a couple of weekend trips to the south of France. This weekend, we're heading to Amsterdam and Berlin. And then for our next entire month, we're actually going to be home based out of Florence and then be doing a couple of trips out of there, which I'm super excited about because Italy has always been on my bucket list and I've never gotten around to it. So being able to do this in a whole month span will definitely, definitely be insane. What's your favorite food in Paris? Oh, tough question because we've definitely been eating a lot of crepes and baguettes, but honestly, there's this dish called beef bourguignon, which is so gas. But I'm not gonna lie, as much as I would love to explore more of the French cuisine, most of our days are pretty much filled with filming, editing, or doing production for other projects. And to be the most economical with our spending, we've really been trying to cook as much as we can at home. So it really isn't like I'm going out to these places to explore the food, and it's just like I'm exploring a city for the city it is. How's the overall experience been living in Paris and how are the expenses compared to New York City? The experience has been great. I've loved every minute of it. I think Paris has always been a dream city for me. Literally just watching the sunset over the Seine right now has me pretty much just in awe of all the city has to offer. As much as I love every other part of New York City, it does get very fast paced. And at times we just need to be still and live in the moment. I think being able to do something like this and this entire backdrop that I'm looking at right now, it's not something you're gonna be able to get anywhere in the States. In addition to that, the architecture, everywhere I look is just such gorgeous buildings that I cannot stop taking pictures of. Literally my entire camera roll is filled with these beautiful buildings, as well as the people. I know the French can get a rap for being a little bit rude, which can be the case in certain instances, but for the most part, a lot of people, if not everyone we've met, have been super, super nice and very helpful. If any time we're looking for directions, need to know where to go, or asking for any sort of recommendations, everyone has been very generous with their time. And especially as we've been filming these videos, for the majority of times, we haven't had people turn us down and say no, which I think is gonna be a pretty big difference compared to the States, where everyone is just so busy or in their own heads or just not willing to take the time out of their day to help someone out or just take the time to listen to one another. And I think that's a huge difference that I've definitely found here in Paris. All right, next question, Chief. How have you survived this long in Europe without AC? I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've been surviving. I think I've literally been inching away every single day closer and closer to my death, but it has been brutal. You've seen the clips, you've seen me dying in the vlogs because there has been no AC, but we're getting by, we have fans, we have nitrogen cans of air and water, so we're making do with what we can. Favorite outfit? I'm not gonna lie, I have a couple of them. I'll throw up some pics right here, but we've been really trying to go crazy with the fit pics, go crazy with the reels, go crazy with the content. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Let me know what you guys wanna see more of. We're really trying to push more our reels and TikTok. So definitely check us out in the links in the description and follow us over there. What's your next step after traveling Europe? Oof, I don't know. I mean, my tentative plan is to be here as long as my visa allows, which is gonna be around the middle of October. You know, after that, obviously I gotta head back to the States, recoup a little bit, and then, Honestly, I could not tell you where the wind will take me next. To be honest, traveling has always just been a huge passion of mine. I love exploring these new cultures and being able to create these cinematic content for you guys. And I'm not gonna lie, at the end of these few months, if I realize I can make this a financially viable option, then I will 100% be going as hard as I can and we're gonna take it to the next level. So keep running up the likes, keep dropping those comments, guys. You guys are really the reasons I'm able to do this. And at the end of the day, I'm just trying to make this content so you guys can see all these places and I know growing up like if I had been able to watch a YouTube video of anyone traveling I know it would have opened up my eyes to a more worldly view at an early age so I hope that that's what I've been able to share with you guys and I hope you guys have enjoyed what's worse buried alive or drowning Jesus who wrote that me I just thought of it <laughs>
Uh, uh, drowning. Actually, no, they're both terrifying. I don't want to answer that. What was it like directing a, your first film? I'm not going to lie, I learned a lot, not only about the directing process, but pre-production as well as post-production. But overall, I had a really great experience being able to create something before I left the city. I think it was a really big passion project that I was able to get all my friends together and create just one last huzzah. And as you guys have seen, if you haven't already, go check it out. I think the work paid off and it speaks for itself. And it's definitely the first of many projects to come. So if you guys want to see more of those short films, definitely let us know in the comments down below. I'm not going to lie, the sun has pretty much set and it was quite relaxing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little ASMR Sunset on the Sen Q&A. That's a nice title, Sunset on the Sen Q&A. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a like down below. You guys will be seeing much more content from your boy pretty soon. So don't forget to turn on your notifications. And if you're new around here, subscribe for new videos. But that's it for me today and au revoir. <sighs> That's a wrap.